Well, I was born in a slum, smaller than my bathroom. Now, how big is your house? Only well, about forty thousand square feet. Wow! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow! Look at this beautiful mansion. Dubai is a city that rewards anyone who is hardworking and determined. My guest for today grew up on the streets of Mumbai and made a living by selling milk. And today. He is one of the most celebrated billionaires of Dubai, and here we are today at his massive mansion at Emirates Hills. I have been invited for an iftar by Dubai's very own one percent man, real estate tycoon, founder and chairman of Danube Group, Mr. Rizwan Sajid. Ramadan Kareem. Hello, Kamya. Welcome, welcome. So nice to meet you. So happy to have you also. And you here. have a beautiful mansion. Thank you so much. I mean, you've been building homes in Dubai, giving homes to so many people, and mashallah, you're blessed with a beautiful house yourself. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> this is the most easiest thing for us. Absolutely. In the building material, in the home interiors. So making a house for us is the most easy thing. Well, I will love to take a tour of your house. What I'm absolutely amazed by is the fleet of cars, mm -hmm. and all of them have the same number. Yeah, absolutely. They all have seven eight six nine. Seven eight six nine. Okay. Uh, you know, seven eight six. We Muslims always believe that's a lucky right. number for all of us, and yeah. has that uh, meaning behind it. Nine is my lucky number because oh. I am born on twenty seventh December. Okay. So two plus seven nine. Nine. So that's why all the numbers has seven eight six nine. I would love to see your collection of cars. Have a look. What about this one? This is a Kalinan, of course. Yeah. We love this car. And then you have the Lamborghini over here, Samira's car. This okay. is a Maybach. Right. I want to know. You've been living in Dubai for more than thirty years. Hmm. What made you choose Emirates Hills as a place? My journey. We started with Karama. The first okay. house was in Karama. When we uh, we were sh staying in a sharing accommodation, me and my wife. Uh, sharing accommodation. Sharing accommodation. We were staying with one Malayali family. Okay. Uh, one bedroom they were sharing. One bedroom there we were sharing. Uh, after that we moved into our own house in Karama. Okay. That means again a rented house opposite Lulu Hypermarket. We luckily bought a house in Marina, and that was this first house by Imar which was built. So Marina Townhouse which was bought. And but we were so much used to Karama. I always wanted to stay in a beach or a sea face house. Okay. So we moved to a palm house. Mm -hmm. Now the palm house, which I was supposed to buy for five and a half million dirhams, I bought for twenty-four million dirhams. Uh, but the premium, yeah. what was happening in that palm for the five hundred thousand somebody had paid was one point two million dirhams. I told the broker, look, I will buy that house if he allows me for one million dirham premium. That means he has made put five hundred. I will still give him one million because I have I am late in this. Yeah. That fellow who had the house did not. बच इस नो 1.2 पॉइंट टू अगर साफ देगा तो लेगा वरना नहीं देना है ऐसे नहीं वन पॉइंट टू इज टू मच एक मिलियन में दे दो ही डिड नॉट गिव इट बिकेम वन पॉइंट थ्री इट बिकेम वन पॉइंट फाइव प्रीमियम टू मिलियन ऐसे आई डोट वॉन्ट बाई दिस हाउस बिकॉज इज नॉ बी ऑन माई रीच आई लेव दैट हाउस फाइनली आई बॉट दैट हाउस फॉर ट्वेंटी फोर पॉइंट फाइव मिलियन दिरम्स वैन आई वॉन्ट टू मूव सो दैट दो लाख दिरम बचाने के लिए बीस मिलियन का नुकसान किया But <laughs> part two story. Okay. Okay. Part two story. Now we shifted to the third house. We shifted to Emirates Hills house. Right. Okay. Bechne gaye. Twenty-seven million was I was asking. Yeah. The buyer who came to me. Yeah. He says twenty-six. I'll give you. I stuck to my price of twenty-seven. I said no. Twenty-seven. Hoga to dega. Buyer yeah. said twenty-six million. Last okay. two years market started yes. that, 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 going up. You have seen that how the yeah. price went up. That. One million dirham. The buyer did not confirm. I did not give. I sold that same villa for fifty-four million dirham. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> well, that explains why he is the real estate tycoon of Dubai. <laughs> so sometimes you know you lose and sometimes you gain. You gain. It all depends on what market situation you. Huh. So I always advise everybody when you want to buy a house, yeah, don't think too much. Too much. Yeah. Be quick. Dimag na ya. Le lo. Absolutely. Now I would love to see your house, absolutely, this mansion. Yeah. It looks absolutely beautiful. I 
can see there's a beautiful pool here. Do you spend a lot of time here? I do every day without fail. 30 to 45 minutes I have to be in the pool because that really wakes me up, rejuvenates yeah. me, give me the full energy which I want. Wow, and okay. Without the pool, I cannot survive. <laughs> so whenever I travel also, I yeah. check my ask my secretary book a hotel hmm. which has a pool. Right, and I think now it's time for iftar. Absolutely. So we need so. to take the path. Massive spread. Yes. <laughs> is that how iftar is usually? It's not so At many dishes. Now this is in your honor because you oh, are here. Oh wow. <laughs> you have a beautiful family. It was so nice to hear stories all around the world, wherever you all have been. So, Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, just sharing this delicious, huge spread. <laughs> Tell me, do you like eating? Are you a big time foodie? I love food to be honest. I'm a very yeah. good. Uh, uh, whenever I go, uh, the most important thing is the food for me. I travel a lot, mm -hmm. so I go to my friends uh, in different countries. Mm -hmm. And uh, the question asked to me is the food or the place? Whether you want to eat in a five star hotel or you want to eat in a dhaba and get good food. So okay. my answer would be, <coughs> of course, food. <laughs> and do you have any favorites? I can see samosa has been a really big part of the Samosa, Sita. I was born in a humble lower middle class family. Mm -hmm. My dad had put me into convent school. He could only afford to pay the school fees. Mm -hmm. More than the school fees, the pocket money and all that was very limited given to me to my sister. So I remember only 15 rupees a month at that particular time. Total requirement, if you really want to enjoy with your friends, you would require at least 70 rupees to 100 rupees. Mm -hmm. And we were getting only 15 rupees a month. But my money, 15 rupees, is to get finished in one week, maximum 10 days. So it was embarrassing because then my friends were having samosas and I used to then ask them, can I also, can you please give me a samosa? I went and told my dad, look, can you increase my pocket money? Dad said, no, I can't increase your pocket money. So then I said, let me do some business of mine. He said, what business do you want to do? I was only 14 at that time. But I remember the first business I did was I went to wholesale market in Masjid Bandar in Mumbai. Bought some stationary books from there. And you'll be surprised that that particular time when the book season was lasting, when the children had to buy the, all my colleagues had to buy the, uh, all my friends had to buy the books. I had 200 rupees profit in my with me. Oh, wow. I was requiring 75 rupees and 200 rupees mein baas ban gaya tha. So I was like rich guy. I used to tell him, Kisko samosa khana hai, aao khana, baito khila tao. That is so amazing. So that like means... this, we have done many small small businesses just to eat this samosa in the canteen. <laughs> was that your first ever earning? You that was my first ever earning. First okay. ever earning of my own because I told my dad I want 1000 rupees, yeah. bought the book, sold, made 200 rupees out of it. <laughs> How was your childhood in Mumbai? You were born in a place called Ghatkopar, Yes, right? I was born in a place called Ghatkopar. Same, same for me actually. I was really? born in Ghatkopar, okay. Rajavad. So you are in Rajavad, right? Rajavad. I was in Panthanagar. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So you how was your You know the Chal system over there, yes, Panthanagar, yes. yes. <laughs> so it was nice, very yeah. good. We, one of the best times I think we had. Yes. And then 12th standard, I had to go to Kuwait. Right. Uh, because I, when dad expired, I wrote to my uncle yeah. that I want to come to, uh, can you give me a job in Kuwait? Uh, and I'm already 18. Almost 18. Yeah. And this job which I got was 18,000 rupees a month. At that Three time. times more. 150 dinars, I remember. 18,000 rupees. So that was a lottery for me. Can you imagine Kamya? Yeah. I mean, from 6,000 rupees, struggling to make that 6,000 and getting the job of 18,000 rupees a month. Wow. First, I sold the books. Book season was over. Then came the Raksha Bandhan. Yeah. Um, sold Rakhi. Yeah. Uh, after that, Diwali season came. Yeah. Sold. Uh, Crackers. Yeah. So just to make that, my whole aim was that my friends should have more money than me. Time came, the cracker was finished. Now what do I have to do? What do I have to do? So someone said, why would you sell the milk? I said, why would you sell the milk? Why would you sell the milk? Only problem was, you have to get up in the morning at 4.30, yeah. collect the two cans of, put yeah. it in your cycle and go to different houses and deliver the milk and come. Everything going perfect. Yeah. My salary was 150 rupees per month. First month, I got 150 rupees. Second month, on the 27th, uh, I remember this date, 27th of the month it was, I'm doing, going to deliver this house, uh, milk in one of the house. Mm. There was one fat lady who used to come and collect the milk from me. Instead of the fat lady, one girl opened the door. And apparently, 
I was seeing her at that time during the college days, like we were dating each other. <laughs> and uh, when she looked at me, she said, "You." So, like, uh, like my face had become very small. I said, "Yes, me." She took the milk and she slammed the door on my face. I was tensed a little bit. I took my bicycle, put that can again on the bicycle, started riding my bicycle, and thinking about my girlfriend. And in the bargain, there was a stone came in front of the bicycle. The, I had an accident. The bicycle fell down. The milk fell down. Oh. Uh, certain milk fell down. I don't know what to do with it. Then I said, "Let me put some water." My oh. boss called me. You are cheating with me, and you are pu putting water, and you are delivering milk. I had no an answer, but I, then I told him. I confessed to him what happened. Of course, because the four customers had. complained to him he was very angry he gave me a gpl i'm sure you know guys what is the meaning of gpl <laughs> <laughs> and he says don't come from tomorrow <laughs> from 20 on 27th of month you lost your i job. lost my job for which i had worked 27 days i lost that salary of that month you didn't get paid i didn't get paid i lost oh. my girlfriend Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the story. <laughs> and I'm sure there must have been like we know that Kuwait had a political unrest situation at some point of time. Hmm. Were you still there in the country and do you recall any particular moment from that time? For 8 years we, I was working in Kuwait. Hmm. I started as a trainee and there's a story where my uncle called me at 5 o'clock in the morning and he says there's one get up get up Hey, what happened, Uncle? Everything is okay. Mm. He said, "You know, your Kuwait has been invaded." Now, at that particular time, I did not knew the meaning of invade. So I asked him, "What do you mean by invaded?" He says, "Kuwait ke upper kabza kar liya Iraq ne." I said, "Aisa kaise kabza kar liya?" So he says, "You open the windows and uh, see what's happening." Yeah. And I saw the windows, and actually, I could see lot of um, you know these tanks going, the military tanks going up down the road. Oh, and i immediately came on the phone uncle what is this hmm. he says the iraqis have entered kuwait and they have taken over kuwait and so i said i said what do i do now he says go to the office uh, pick up all the documents bring it to the house the communication was completely closed at that time that means there was no telephone no uh, tv nothing was there we had no contact with our uh, people in india and we could not send any messages nothing was allowed um, and we were all scared everybody was scared so then i went to the indian embassy the indian embassy said if you want to send a telegram mm. you, there is a way you have to go to iraq and send the telegram so i said but why not uh, i send for everybody mm. he says what do you mean he said i'm going to go and send my telegram mm. i'm going to collect telegrams for everybody because i saw a business opportunity in there um, <laughs> so i put my bakda over there just yeah. a small like knife, a cart like a cart and i said telegrams can be sent to your house only five dinars for 50 words people started queuing for that okay, this man is going to send a telegram for us i'll say i'll give you the receipt also after i send the telegram people started queuing um, took a car went to iraq during the war during the war where all you know if you have seen the movie airlift yes. how there were uh, all different different firing is happening and uh, you know police vans are there and uh, military uh, army on the road checking at every point in that particular war zone i went delivered 150 telegram and the business model was you collect money in kuwaiti dinars yeah. and you pay in iraqi dinars the yeah. difference was one kuwaiti dinar was 10 iraqi dinar so five dinars kuwaiti has to collect and five iraqi dinars so i was making 45 Iraqi dinars on every telegram we were making. Oh, it was a lot of margin. Lot of margin. Lot of margin. <laughs> <laughs> But the risk was very, very high, high, very high that's risk. True. And to be honest, my all of my friends, none of them would even think about that you will go on the war zone. Absolutely. But I was enjoying it. I mean, I knew that it was a big risk. Yeah. I did that for three rounds, and then I think we said, okay, let's stop now. We do something else. Yeah. Uh, next business we did was. selling oil on the street where we bought from the wholesale market sold to people engine oil to the people yeah. who wanted to buy in outside the mosque we had to put this today also if somebody tells me rizwan uh, you don't have money and what you will do i said okay fir bakda laga lenge kaun si badi baat hai you have a lot of confidence in the salesman in you but of course this tells that you know the entrepreneurial spirit in you even mm. a war can't stop you absolutely yeah. but i want to know where does this spirit come from matlab is it is it for money i think it's inborn money today i have enough money hmm. but still today also i work 12 hours a day so it's not because of i want to earn money 
Hmm. It's because I enjoy working. I enjoy doing something. And I'm sure, Kame, you must be doing the same thing. Yeah. You must be also working. How many hours do you work? I do. About 12 to 14. Okay. So, yeah. it's the same way. When you're yeah. an entrepreneur, you have that passion. Yeah. Money is the secondary thing. Of course, sure. money comes along if you hmm. work. Hmm. But money is not, you're not working because of money. If I tell you to do something, I don't have to do anything. It's so much that we will eat and eat. It's fun to do something. You're enjoying, enjoying yourself. Working, yeah. And money is just a byproduct. Yeah, absolutely. It. it takes a lot to quit your job and start something of your own, especially when you have a family, right? You have children and you have a wife and you have a house to run. So, was that a difficult decision? At that particular time, when I took hmm. that decision, the only money which I had was 100,000 dirhams in my pocket. The money we came to Dubai. Okay. Ke banaya, okay. Jo, when I came and worked for my yeah. friend, yeah. Uh, we made 100,000 dirhams in virtue of commission. So, 100,000 okay. dirhams were saved. 100,000 dirhams, I gave 30,000 dirhams to Samira. I said, this is 5,000 dirhams in a month. I have to work for 6 months. I don't want to ask for 5,000 dirhams. In this case, your rent, your grocery, everything is coming. In 70,000 dirhams, I took an office. Liya. Right. 20,000 dirhams, I took a car. I took a car and made a trade license. Ab पंद्रह हजार रुपये बचे थे जो तीन महीने के सैलरी के रखे थे जो समीरा हेल्प केम एंड हेल्प मी टू इन द जॉब प्लस आई टू कीप वन मोर असिस्टेंट तो बचाने के लिए तीन महीना का रखा हुआ था कि तीन महीने में कुछ ना कुछ बनेगा वरना कंपनी को बंद करना पड़ेगा समीरा को छह महीने का पैसे दिया ब्रोकरेज when you come from Dubai, coming from come from Kuwait, trying to sell in Dubai, making your contract not easy. Yeah. Luckily got couple of breaks. Yeah. काम चल गया. दो पांच हजार रुपये पहले महीने में बन गया, दूसरे महीने में दस हजार बना, तीसरे महीने में बीस हजार बना, मैंने कहा गाड़ी अभी चल पड़ी है। It's only the initial thing, you know, and then you find your way around. But it's not easy to be honest. You know, he says it's the initial days. Yeah. But you have to have it in you. Does luck have a role to play? No matter whatever what people say, luck definitely has very very important role in you. Because I when I you know, have spoken to a couple of people over here and he says, no Rizwan, it's not luck. If it was luck, then everybody would do it. I said, no, luck is very, very important. It's the combination of hard work, luck and your inborn quality. All these three things together makes you a businessman. Mm-hmm. If whatever hard work you do, whatever inborn quality you have, if you don't have anything else, you can't do anything else. When you were born, hmm. how big was your house? How many square feet, meters, whatever? whatever you well, I was born in a slum. Okay. So, at that time, what square feet? It was smaller than my bathroom. After that, I would say two bathroom was my house, you know, the stall system in Panthanagar. Mm-hmm. One room kitchen, it was, we call it as. One room means, uh, one room which has the bedroom, the living room, everything like a studio apartment over here. And one kitchen was there where mom was keep cooking and we, five of us were sleeping in that same room. My Mother and uh, father were sleeping on the bed. I was sleeping down along with my brother sisters. Now, how big is your house? This one? This one is about 40,000 square feet. Wow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the house where you were born yeah. is not in your hands. Hmm. That is your destiny. Correct. But then as you grow older and hmm. what you do with your life hmm. is probably in one way or the other is in your hands, Correct. right? And, and it was it. But you've seen so much in your life. Are there any insecurities? Do you ever feel like what if I lose it or what if I don't? Or do you ever get these kind of thoughts? And how is your equation with money in that case? I'm a very calculative as far as spending is concerned. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I say calculative, I'm not a spender. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the same time, I spend also, but I don't overspend. I don't have that insecurity of losing money, but yes, you can lose money tomorrow. But I know that if I lose money, I will again put a bakada in your and you will make it I'll again. I'll make it again. Yeah. 100%. At today also, at this age of my life, mm-hmm. when I have made everything, mm-hmm. put me on the road or the streets of Africa, in the jungle of Africa, mm-hmm. I will make myself again. Yeah, I'm sure you would have seen the entire city transforming so much in the last 30 years. Absolutely. I mean, the way yeah. Dubai was, <laughs> what before and what it has transformed, it's good to see it happen in front of us. Yeah, I'm quite fascinated by the aquarium there. So, can we go there? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Why not? Okay, we're going to play a fun game mm. as we sit here. I'm going to give you a few choices. Mm. Mm. You've got to give me an answer in just five seconds. So, to begin with, 
downtown dubai or dubai marina for prime real estate downtown dubai the appreciation there will be much faster villa or a penthouse in the city penthouse in the city why would you say that given that you love beaches <laughs> <laughs> because i am selling the base product project <laughs> salesman <laughs> okay a place you love driving off to my office okay <laughs> a holiday destination which is your most favorite switzerland your favorite celebrity ranveer singh as of now i okay. would say okay yeah. a bollywood bff if you have any yes i have many of them to be honest all the my age people i would hmm. say very close to sanjay dat okay uh, goinda sunil shetty uh, close buddies Gulshan Grova. Okay. So all these people are very, very. Whenever they are there, they will ensure they would call me. We will go out for dinner. Mumbai or Dubai? More expensive or real estate would be? Of course, Mumbai. Hmm. Mumbai is much more expensive than Dubai. Is I would always say, still very, very affordable compared to many cities in the world. If <clears> life would have turned out differently, and if it was not for real estate, what do you think you would have pursued? Probably become a director and made a film. A film? Yeah. Is that something that's there on your bucket list? Yes, there is there in the wish list. There yeah. is okay, okay. Are you looking for a heroine? <laughs> <laughs> okay, a location in Dubai which is too overrated. I don't think there are any location is there which is overrated. All mm. the locations are good. Dubai is growing, and every part of Dubai is growing. So I don't see any reason which is overrated. Any place which is underrated? A lot of places like this, Purjan, can go up very high. Uh, I would say. Arjan also where we feel uh, Dubai sports city I would say underrated because that's a place it should go up very well. Uh, I'm going to give you quick choices. Mm. Okay, you've got to tell me what would you choose. Would you rather own a gold-plated iPhone or a diamond-studded Rolex watch? I think Rolex watch because the price will go up. <laughs> <laughs> go skydiving over the palm or go dune bashing? Dune bashing. I yeah? hate. Sky I mean, I'm I'm scared of skydiving. Never done. Never it. done that. Okay, be a part of the show Dubai Bling or Big Boss. Bling bling. <laughs> <laughs> Own a private island in World Islands or a penthouse in Burj Khalifa. World island. World island. Yes. Okay. <laughs> you know the thing about Dubai, and I've I've heard a lot of people like when they move into the city, one of the first things they pursue is real estate. Yes. Why is that? The way real estate is growing in Dubai, hmm. and this is only the beginning. Dubai. prices are very very affordable yeah. compared to other cities in the world other like when i say other cities in the world if you compare dubai with london we yeah. are one third the price compare with hong kong we are one fourth the price compare with my own city mumbai we are half the price with russia new york we are half the price so all these cities in the world if you compare where uh, dubai is growing and reaching at their stage or probably or past them yeah. uh, and the price is not going to remain the same so yes. still very liquidity so any people who comes here wants to buy uh, real estate or wants to start selling real estate you are called the 1% man hmm. what is this 1% scheme if you can uh, make us understand or simplify it for <coughs> us you see when we came into real estate uh, hmm. from building material and then we wanted to start a new division which is real estate so we brainstorm and we realize that everybody is selling real estate over here but they are selling all expensive real estate over here all the villas of apartment which are 4 5 million dirhams mm. villas 10 12 million dirhams and i said if i am going to join the race of this people i will mm. never be able to compete them because at first i don't have that sort of money mm. and second thing they are the big giants over here to compete with them is going to be impossible we realize that 90% of the expats 85 to 90% of the expats who are living in this city are staying in the rented apartment and they are staying here for a long time and they want to continue staying here for a long time and they would be my buyers mm. we'll be targeting them to buy my apartment but how do i target them because they are salaried people the bank will not give them the loan on an mm. off plan property immediately but they still want to buy so we all brainstorm i said okay let me collect a small down payment from them which is about 20% we collect the down payment from them 10 plus 10 and balance 1% per month now that 1% idea became a hit because many people who actually could not buy a house because of the scheme of one person they are able to buy this house and that's how i have been called as one person man and you'll be surprised kamya it was earlier started with only keeping in mind the people of ua whom we are going to sell to but today my majority of the buyers are the international buyers who are availing this scheme 
of the one person, including many Bollywood stars, including wow. many Bollywood stars. So all they have to do is only pay one percent a per month. month. Yes, and after the handover also. We collect from them only one percent per month, and that's also zero interest rate. No interest. Zero interest. Zero interest. I haven't had a bad debt in the last ten years. I'm doing this with the one percent payment plan. Almost zero bad debt in this. Ten years. Yeah. And how many homes have you sold? Fifteen thousand. You know, Mr. Sajan, your story has. literally been like rags to riches kind of story i see a lot of beautiful pictures around of your family members so who all live here in this mansion the business was started <laughs> by me and my wife and then uh, mm -hmm. came was uh, my brother mm -hmm. uh, i said anish you need to come and help me because we are going growing and we i need somebody from uh, the family member to help me so he is the one who came and is still there with me mm -hmm. he handles the building material division of our company i handle now the property then of course adil was growing up as he grew at uh, grew up and he studied his mba uh, we gave him a portfolio of danube home okay. and of course he is now opened the danube sports world right. and his children right. now they also manage uh, the other division like uh, one of them one of the son is managing milano okay. and the other one is managing the casa milano which is a very luxury uh, fittings and business which we are into okay. uh, my daughter in law sana she is also uh, handling the american aesthetic center Oh, wow. My okay. sister is also so doing some uh, <laughs> Alicia Parel. She has her own fashion designing stores, and plus doing a lot of charity work. So it's all in the family. Like I, you know, like ours is a very, very contented and bounded family, uh, where we are all together at all the time. Yeah, I could see that today when I was having an iftar with all of y'all. And my mm. mom, she's the yeah. I would say the <laughs> pillar of the house. And we've seen that you know you. Uh, really believe in giving back to the society mm -hmm. and you're involved in a lot of initiatives but if you can take us through any particular initiative that you that's very close to you and your heart you know for us muslims the biggest thing which we can give back to the society is make a mosque mm -hmm. uh, and let the people pray over there mm -hmm. and we have made this mosque <coughs> in the honor of my father Uh, which my mother is going to inaugurate 27th of uh, Ramadan which is the uh, biggest night the uh, is it, this mosque is going to be inaugurated we are going to pray the prayers wow and okay. uh, it's in studio city right. next to our uh, buildings glitz 1 2 3 so it's a big thing for us because like i said for a muslim this is a very very big thing for you to make a mosque with your expenses where people will come and pray because every every time somebody prays you also get the little bit of blessings Uh, because of the mosque you have created over Absolutely. there. Absolutely. What is that one advice that you would like to offer to all the entrepreneurs who are watching out there who are currently in two minds whether to quit their job or not? Quitting a job and starting something is a good idea. Dubai is a good place. You should do it uh, because there's a lot of opportunities over here. But at the same time, make sure you do your calculations right because uh, if you lose what you have. and if you're not able to succeed then you'll be in trouble take an experience of whatever you're doing whether you're doing uh a video camera you're shooting <laughs> for somebody or you're in a restaurant working for somebody or doing whatever you are doing take that experience then you start your business your chances of you success will be very much yeah and plus you should have have that believe that that thing is there in you like i said it's not only hard work and luck which pays that entrepreneurial skills should be there in you and maybe one day you will also have a house 40000 square feet <laughs> <laughs> mr rizwan it's been amazing you know spending this evening with you and thank you so much for having me around your house absolutely i always love to see you last time also we had met and we yes. did something together but you also have a lot of positive energy and i like the way you your quality is growing and wishing thank you. you all the best all the success if anything i can do for you please remember us yes one house please <laughs> one thank house you. yeah of course Ah, one house. One person only. Okay. <laughs>